Adelaide. Where did you put Eugene? Here are his golden teeth. Hey. What can I do for you? I got the golden teeth. You found Eugene's teeth? What? Where? How? Oh, you know. It was over there. No, don't worry about it. Yes, you may be right. I'm not sure I want to know. I suppose I should be grateful. You've saved me some trouble and no small amount of embarrassment. Yeah. See you later. I wonder how come that was in the quest. I mean, we can do it, but it, it it's not named the quest. It's not even part of the optional quest. It's just a thing you could do. Hey. Grave digging's a fine profession. Always work to be had, and nary a word of complaint out of your clients. Well, I guess I can't tell you about the teeth. Alright, see you around. up here. Ooh. Mm. Must have thought you were badass because you just got this little primal. Yeah. Man, it's so satisfying taking them out. It just is. It's just is. Taking them out, popping their head. Making their head go whoop. What's over here? Pretty fun exploring. You think we can find over here? No enemies. Ooh, we put the legs, the head, and the leg. Did I say leg twice? <laughs> With the arms, the, the head, and the leg. But just the one leg. Just the one leg. I wonder what messed him up. I don't know. Energy cell. Ammo. What happened to them? Part of the primals. Maybe. I 
Angela to stick around for them to show back up. So they can like try and treat me how they did them. That'd be interesting to see how that turns out. But yeah, we better go. I'm just looking around. Trying to get into some trouble. Trying to find some trouble. But I can't find any. Oh well. Hey provider, you wanna go see my pot? It's right up here. Actually I don't think we can because it's like a high jump. Yeah, I just realized that. Alright, it's time to go. I have to try to squeeze everything I can out of this place before we leave, because I know we probably ain't gonna come back. Alright, Max. It's time to roll. Woo! Hey there! Welcome back, Captain. All systems are now operating within acceptable parameters. Shall I take our ship into orbit? Yes. Oh, wait. Before you do that, let's make sure we have everything checked. We got a refrigerator stocked up with plenty of food that can last us. Oh, I don't know, maybe eight months. Um, I want to make sure that the bathroom is clean and our room is checked for bed bugs, and then we can take off. See you. Rooms are still sealed. I guess we gotta take up the orbit. We got no food. Later that same evening. All right, I'm back. We have all the food that we need. Food is in the refrigerator. The beds are well. The rooms are still sealed. Let's go ahead and get this thing in orbit. But I did get some new covers. Welcome back, Captain. All systems are now operating within acceptable parameters. Shall I take our ship into orbit? Yes. Get us out of here. Open it up. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty, and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Hmm. Hold on, my controller is acting weird. Hold on. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I had to fix my controller. Sometimes it does that when I close the laptop. Uh, I'm feeling a little lightheaded. Also, I can slow down time. I forgot to tell you that. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. Well, slow down. Time out of the light headed. happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I okay. have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Okay. Why do you need a nav key? Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraform badly and almost completely lawless you'll love it okay. the captains don't fly their own ships you see your navigation terminal handles the uh, you know navigation think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions oh. 
The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys called Kelly. Hmm. Okay. Right. Right, the Black Marketeer. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Hmm. Okay. Can't that land somewhere outside Stellar Bay? Stellar Bay, excuse me. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia. And in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Survive. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures, more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys called Kelly. Okay. Alright, I'll talk to Gladys then. Excellent. How should she look her like? Wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design, cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Okay, I'll put her to get used, thanks. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. Alright. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. No, I don't care about that. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Okay. Man, oh man, oh man. Wow. 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 Okay. There's more in art. Okay. Celia. Sila. How do you say it? Largest Astro is over in Helicon. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Hey, guys. Havarti! Oh, <laughs> of course, I see you in uh, Cargo Bay. Hey, what's up? Yeah, so this is my hiding spot now. Pretty I much. was looking for a place that was quiet. I figured the kitchen would be louder than the hold, so... Here I am. Cozy like, ain't it? It is. Hmm. What do you think of the ship? That's in pretty good shape considering how hard Mr. Hawthorne ran it. It's a Yakita LHA-120. A2 model, I'm pretty sure. The Block 2 design scooshed in extra cargo space but didn't change the stock engines. Probably a touch underpowered, huh? Mm. Accurate in all particulars. I conclude you are Edgewater's board certified mechanic. <laughs> Apparently, Ada is the one who actually flies the ship. Fly by wire's pretty normal. Or at least, ways that's what I read in the trades. I've never been on a real ship before. Hello! I am not a board certified mechanic, but my dad was. He taught me all he knew. Do you understand? Speech recognition is one of the many skills I have been programmed to simulate. You're not simulating it, you're doing it! I asked a question and you answered it. I am gratified you consider this facsimile convincing. <laughs> Ada, Vardy will be fixing you from now on. I expect full cooperation. I am at your disposal, Ms. Parvati. You will find the technical schematics in the engineer's locker. Though I'm afraid Captain Hawthorne has lost the owner's manual. I don't see any holes in the hole. I'll take a good squint at her, make sure everything's tip-top. But I think we're cooking with plasma torches. 
You can do that, you know. My dad taught me how to make grilled cheese sandwiches with a plasma torch. Sure, you can cook anything with a goddamn plasma torch. Um, I think it's time for you to move along. I don't know. Did you learn a trade from your father? Sounded like, uh, sounded like it when you talked to Reed. Re oh, yeah, Reed, Reed. Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. Hmm. I don't see the humor. He meant funny as in odd. Oh. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. Huh. But you actually are good at this and you, you're enjoying it, right? You seem ecstatic to talk about anything like this. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. Damn. <clears throat> <laughs> this has been interesting, but I want to talk about something else. <laughs> you didn't like your classes? There were a whole lot of reading, not nearly enough doing. Like, before they'd issue you a wrench, they wanted an essay on the design of different wrenches. Then there'd be quizzes on company regulations for storage and maintenance of wrenches. Wow. You need a quiz for a quiz. What did you do all your time off? As soon as I got permission, I spent all my time in the machine shop. They had all manner of parts, but they didn't want me using them, so I had to sneak them sometimes. I even slept in there. Had a hammock tied up in the rafters. Before I left, I installed a little skylight for myself so I could see the stars. Did you build anything fun? When an engine came in, I'd strip it down and rebuild it. I mostly built for myself. Custom tools, little mechanical critters to talk to. When my roommates tried to talk, I'd get so nervous I'd be drenched in sweat. It was easier for everybody when I stayed off on my own. I doubt any of them remember me now. Huh. At the school, you moved straight back to Edgewater, right? Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big ol' hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower and stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. Huh. Did you get much time with him after you got back from school? About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects or listen to my fretting. Oh, God. <laughs> Look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. Hmm. All right. Captain's quarters. I don't know if I like this sign. Uh... Holographic Shroud. 